Welcome back now for the news in detail. We begin. The US, Pakistan, China and Russia have called for a comprehensive and permanent ceasefire in Afghanistan. This follows recent intra-Afghan talks and another round of negotiations between the United States and Taliban in Qatar. In a joint statement after meeting in Beijing, envoys of the four countries pushed for direct talks between the Afghan government and Taliban insurgents. They said the dialogue should be Afghan-led and led to a peace framework as soon as possible. The four envoys emphasized the importance of their consensus on the Afghan peace process agreed in April. Meanwhile, Human Rights Watch has called for Afghan commandos to be prosecuted after they killed four civilians during a raid on a medical center in central Afghanistan. In a statement, it said deliberate attacks on medical facilities and the killing of civilians are war crimes. Neither the Afghan Defense Ministry nor U.S. forces in Afghanistan immediately commented. It was not clear whether the U.S. military had supported Afghan troops in the July 8th raid. Now, 13 people, including two journalists, have been killed and 50 others wounded in a terrorist attack in southern Somalia. Witnesses said gunmen stormed a hotel building near the port of Kismayo after detonating a car bomb at its entrance. Regional politicians were holding a meeting inside the hotel at the time. The terrorist group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack. The militant group has been fighting the Somali government for more than a decade. In Syria, government airstrikes have killed 13 people in northwest Idli province. War monitors said another 45 people were wounded in airstrikes on Idlib city center. The raids were previously limited to the city suburbs. Monitors say government forces have regained territory from rebels in an advance on the village of Hamamiyat. A UK-based war monitor reports government forces and their allies have killed over 600 people in Idlib over the past few weeks. Meeting with Russian envoys in Damascus yesterday, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad discussed stabilizing the situation in the province. Meanwhile, Israeli forces have wounded 34 Palestinians during weekly protests along the Gaza border. Palestine's health ministry says Israeli troops fired live ammunition and rubber bullets at the protesters. The ministry says a 10-year-old child is in critical condition after being shot in the head. The demonstrations called for Israel to lift its blockade of the Gaza Strip. Officials say over 300 Palestinians have been killed since the start of weekly protest last year. Police in Gibraltar say four crew members of a seized Iranian tanker have been released on bail without any charge. The four Indian nationals were arrested earlier this week after the vessel was detained on suspicion of smuggling oil to Syria. Police said the crewmen were released unconditionally, but the tanker will remain in detention as investigation is underway. Earlier, Gibraltar's Chief Minister Fabian Picardo claimed the vessel breached European Union sanctions on Syria. Britain's Royal Marines seized the ship last week, allegedly at the request of the United States government. Moving on, Britain says it's deploying a second warship in the Persian Gulf to support freedom of navigation amid rising tensions with Iran. Government officials say the move is part of a pre-planned rotation to ensure Britain's presence in the vital shipping lane. Foreign Minister Jeremy Hunt says London does not want to increase tensions with Iran over the seized oil tanker. He says London is reacting to the situation in a very measured and careful manner. The United States says Turkey cannot have the F-35 fighter jets and Russian S-400 air defense system simultaneously. This follows the delivery of the first batch of the Russian defense system in Turkey. Washington has threatened to expel Ankara from the F-35 program over the purchase of the Russian missile system. Acting Defense Secretary Mark Asper says the United States' position on Turkey's participation in the F-35 program remains unchanged. 
Washington argues the S-400 is incompatible with NATO's defense network and could compromise the F-35 program. But Turkey says the new missile is not a threat to the alliance. Meanwhile, the Venezuelan government and opposition have agreed to set up a platform to resolve the country's political crisis. This comes after three days of Norway brokered talks entered in Barbados. Norway's foreign minister says the parties will hold meetings to find a solution to the crisis. Venezuela's president Nicolas Maduro says he developed six points with the opposition to pursue talks, but he did not specify what they were. Opposition leader Juan Guaido's representative says his delegation would make consultations toward progress. A political crisis has gripped Venezuela since Guaido declared himself the country's interim president in January. Now moving on to Sudan, where a political transition agreement between the military and opposition is expected to be signed today. An African Union envoy says a joint sovereign council will rule the North African country for three years until elections are held. Earlier, the military said it thwarted another attempted coup launched to scuttle the power-sharing deal. State media said 16 serving and retired military officers were arrested. The military and pro-democracy alliance agreed on a joint sovereign council last week to end the crisis continuing since April. The UN says 30 men sentenced to death by a Houthi court in Yemen were tortured during their three-year detention. UN human rights spokeswoman Ravina Shamdasani urged the court to consider violations of their right to a fair trial. More in this package. 30 men were arrested in 2016 and charged in April 2017 with allegedly participating in an armed group intending to carry out attacks on Houthi rebels. Shamdasani said most of them are academics, students and politicians affiliated with the Isla party that is critical of the Houthis. We are deeply alarmed by the imposition of the death penalty on 30 people by the specialized first instance criminal court of the de facto authorities in Sana'a. Yemen has been in the grip of a brutal civil war since 2015. According to the United Nations, the country is facing the largest humanitarian crisis in the world with over 22 million people in need of assistance. Moving on, China says it will slap sanctions on United States firms involved in a potential arms sale worth over $2 billion to Taiwan. A foreign ministry spokesman says the arms sale violated the norms of international law. Earlier, Beijing's top diplomat Wang Yi warned the United States against the planned sale. Yi says no foreign force can stop the reunification of China and should not try to intervene. In Spain, a court has ordered the trial of Catalan President Coim Tora after he refused to remove separator symbols from buildings during recent elections. Tora says he disobeyed the order because it was at the odds with the resolution of the Catalan parliament. He can be removed from office for up to two years for failing to comply with the order. Catalonia is a semi-autonomous region in the northeast Spain. The ruling separatists in the Catalan parliament declared independence in 2017, but Spain's constitutional court called it illegal. Now, President Emmanuel Macron unveils France's latest nuclear-powered Barracuda submarine. The submarine is part of France's $10 billion stealth vessel program. Built by French shipbuilder, the Naval Group, the Barracuda-class submarine is designed to replace the Rubis-class submarines, which have been in service since the 1980s. The French government has ordered six of the 5,000-ton submarines made by the Naval Group. Macron said the submarine will usher France towards a new era of defense. It is not only submarines that you build here. What you are building is really France's independence. What you are building is our sovereignty. The French Navy expects to take delivery of the submarine for sea trials next year. Around 100,000 people were involved in the development of the submarine, which took 12 years to build. France expects the Barracuda class to remain in service until 2060. 
More news to follow, but after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back. Now moving on with the news stories. The United States Immigration and Customs Department will launch raids from Sunday to round up illegal migrants for deportation. President Donald Trump says the authorities will focus on criminal elements. A number of mayors of different cities have refused to cooperate. The Supreme Court has already barred the Trump administration from adding a citizenship question to the 2020 census form. Now, America's National Hurricane Center has warned millions of residents in Louisiana to brace for impact from Tropical Storm Barry. The southern U.S. state and its largest city of New Orleans has threatened with potentially disastrous rainfall and flooding. Officials forecast the storm will reach hurricane status and roar ashore along the state's central coast. Earlier, it packed winds of 65 miles per hour. Officials ramped up evacuations, airlines cancelled flights, and floodgates were slammed shut in preparation. We have rescue, and our fire department's trained in, in rescue. They all, a lot of our firemen have rescue certifications for rescue boats. We have, uh, our sheriff's office has rescue boats. Katrina taught us a big lesson. Katrina taught us that we needed more high water vehicles. Our sheriff's office phased out Crown Victorias and all, and for the most part, and now they're in Ford Explorers because they're higher. Well, Barry will be classified a hurricane once sustained winds hit 74 miles per hour. Now, moving on to Nepal, where flash floods and landslides triggered by rains have killed 17 people. Police said three people were killed after a wall collapse in Kathmandu. Nepal's Med Department has forecast heavy rains for another two days. In northeast India, two men drowned and over 300 houses were submerged after incessant rain in Mizoram state. Heavy monsoon rains have also triggered flooding in low-lying areas of Bangladesh. Human Rights Watch said Rohingya refugees living in crowded camps in Bangladesh are at the risk of displacement from the floods. Now, in the United States, a company in Texas is aiming to sell short recreational flights in a one-seater electric aircraft by the year's end. The company, Lyft Aircraft, envisions a future where everyone can fly. More in this report. It's one of the startups competing with aerospace giants to develop electrical aircraft having vertical takeoff and landing systems. The company has designed aircraft that could be controlled by a joystick without requiring a pilot's license. You know, we truly are on the cusp of a revolution in aviation and it's being brought about by the electrification um, of, of aircraft, uh, much like electric cars are gonna be the future of driving, uh, electric aircraft are gonna be the future of flying. The aircraft resembles unmanned aerial drones with seats for passengers. To fly the aircraft, customers would be required to undergo a 15 minute training session. It will be impactful, it's gonna be like the Jetsons. I think people will start building homes with landing pads on top for their for their VTOLs, for sure. Much like electric cars are going to be the future of driving, electric aircraft is going to be the future of flying. Now in Turkey, the central Cappadocia region is playing host to a hot air balloon festival, attracting visitors from around the world. Colorful air balloons decorated the sky, making the region more picturesque more in this report. Cappadocia is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is famous for hot air balloon trips and fascinating underground cities. The four-day festival was aimed at attracting more tourists. Well, I brought my own balloon from Belgium, Bobo the Happy Lobster, and uh, we're about to take off over here just behind Love Valley for a nice flight. Some 150 hot air balloons took to the sky for six different flights every day. Oh, 
or go down. That's all. And then you have to search the direction of the wind, and so you have a little bit a possibility to have a direction. But for that, you have to be a very good pilot. Tourism sector contributes substantially to Turkey's economy, with Cappadocia being one of the country's top tourist destinations. Now, some of the world's most expensive salt is still collected by hand in a marshy corner of western France. The salt collecting technique has been passed down through the generations for over a thousand years. We have more details in this report. Some people watch the... Farmers use traditional tools to get the salt, harvesting two tons of it a day. Each year, two and a half million euros worth of Geront salt is sold in 55 countries. In U.S. regulators have imposed a $5 billion fine on Facebook as part of a settlement over data privacy violations. It is the largest ever penalty levied on a tech giant by the Federal Trade Commission. The settlement was reached after an investigation found that Facebook stole the data of tens of millions of users. The fine represents approximately 9% of Facebook's revenue of 2018. The social media giant has agreed to improve and protect users' privacy. Now, negotiations between U.S. and Indian trade representatives in New Delhi have ended without any progress on a dispute over tariffs. Indian officials said discussions on key issues have been put off until Indian Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal's visit to Washington for more talks next month. In a short statement, the Indian government said the two countries agreed to continue their discussions on differences ranging from tariffs to market access. Earlier, President Donald Trump said Indian tariffs on U.S. goods are unacceptable. The car-making giants Volkswagen and Ford have announced an expansion of their alliance to develop self-driving cars. Volkswagen says it will invest $2.6 billion in Ford's self-driving unit to market new tech vehicles in the US and Europe. Ford plans to deliver over 600,000 electric vehicles to Europe in six years by using Volkswagen's electric toolkit. The new vehicles will enter the markets by 2023. Volkswagen's chief executive says the alliance will help the company drive down its costs in making zero emissions electric vehicles. Now, the ICC has warned cricket fans against paying thousands of pounds on secondary tickets websites. England will lock horns with New Zealand in the World's Cup final at Lords on Sunday. The prospect of witnessing the host nation make history has led to a frenzied demand for tickets, which are now appearing on unofficial platforms. The cost of some tickets has passed £1,000, while a few are being offered for more than £5,000. The council warns it can cancel tickets being sold on secondary websites. It says the only way supporters can guarantee a ticket is through the official resale site. Well, that's all for now. For more news and updates, keep watching Indus News.